for your entertainment, Yes, Virginia. <laughs>
Uh, well, then to lose. We'll only get a dusting here in Chicago. Sorry, kid. Aww. Well, that'll make the mayor happy. He hates snow. Then why did he move to Chicago? If you're gonna live in Chicago, you've gotta love the snow. Oh, <laughs> and the white stockings. Well, he likes the white stockings. He just hates snow. So it's not gonna snow enough to make a snowman, Papa? No. Well, <laughs> maybe one that's on a diet. <laughs> Now, don't you go getting any ideas, young lady. I'm an old man, you know. You're not so old, Papa. Virginia, look at me. I'm sitting here in my chair reading a newspaper. That doesn't make you old, Papa. Reading a newspaper makes you smart. <laughs> yes, well, smart enough to stay out of any snowball fights, that's for sure. Now, run along. I've got a paper to read. Does it taste almost Christmas, Papa? <laughs> it sure does. Right here in the date. December 23rd, 1898. Just two more days until Christmas. Virginia! What are your plans for today? Well, my fancy has to want me to come and play. A play? I love plays. Can your father and I attend the opening night? And how much is it today? Get the penny! Uh, a penny? That's uh, a bit too rich for my blood. Can you make it a... Uh, a two for one special, both your mother and I for that price. Sure, I'll go meet the patty. Is it a play for one of your fairy tale books? No, it's a Christmas story, the real one. Ah, well, leave it if you want, honey, like your mother here, but as far as I'm concerned, that old story's just like all the others, another fairy tale for children. Oh, but it's not a fairy tale, Papa. <laughs> well, if it were true, it'd be right here in the sun. And it's not. Now, come here. Look at this. I can see an automobile just broke the speed record of 39 miles an hour. Wow, that is fast. Oh, and right there it says, Marie Curry discovered radio. Huh, I wonder what that is. Oh, and right here, Boston just got an underground train. Now that is a story. But I don't see anything in here about a major or flying angels. I'm sorry, sweetie, but I like the facts. That is why I like the sun. It doesn't give you imaginary fairy tales. It just gives you the facts. And the comics. Yes, well, I do indulge myself occasionally, but they're labeled comics. Just as a fairy tales are labeled fairy tales, and facts, they're labeled the sun. Now run along. I've got to catch up on the day's news. Virginia, your father and I will take two tickets to your production. Now, you better go practice. Oh, that's right. You're a play director now. Go direct. Bye, Virginia. Have a good day. Hey, Jamie, what is your Hi, Eddie. Got a friend some costume for my play. Wait, did she say play? Play? I want to be in a play. What play? I'm directing a play, Wes. Ah, uh, come on, Virginia. You can't direct a play. You're just a kid. And you're not even a union. <sighs> I'd have to be friendly. What's a union? It's how they make sure you get paid enough. Ooh, paid. I like the sound of that. Me too. I've been selling pigs all morning and I've hardly made one cent. So how much you getting paid, Jenny? It pays a far more death on my first two tickets. You're directing a play for a penny? How are you going to do that? Well, which is 
it, more or less? You're both right. More or less. Yeah, that's right. We're more and less. But which of us is right? That's what I said. You're both right. More or... Ah, uh, forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. We're talking about Jenny's play here. Think about it. Where else can we buy two tickets to a play for a penny? On Broadway? Broadway? No way. I did say Broadway. We're in Chicago. New York, Chicago, or Kalamazoo. Nobody gets tickets to a play for just a penny. That's a deal. Such a bitch, kid. You're giving them a bargain. And everybody likes a bargain. Right on Franco, especially at Christmas. Imagine a penny. What I could do with a penny if I had one. A penny? That's the price of a bucket full of candy! More or less. Oh, no, not that again. With a penny, I could buy a little bread. Or maybe an apple. Or mail a letter. Or buy a couple of eggs. Or a bottle of milk. Or a paper, a newspaper. You know, like the sun? How about a big house for me and my mom? Yeah. Or maybe I could buy a trip around the world. Yeah, yeah, shit again. What day is your penny really buy you up? It's a dream.
I can drop my witness to prove it. Ma'am, that really isn't necessary. This is not a court case. Nevertheless, she will tell you. Won't you help me? Uh, yeah, sure. I saw the whole thing. Sorry to interrupt, boys, but this lady here claims a flying newspaper gave her quite the headache when it walked her upside the head this morning. Now, officer, who would throw a newspaper at a nice old lady like this? Oh, who are you calling old? I'll prove it. I will. Tell him. Uh, yeah, well, I was uh, in my yard, minding my own business, when out of nowhere, a flying saucer. Uh, no, a newspaper. Yes, of course, it was a newspaper. It came and knocked me square in the head. Uh, no, not me. Her. Yes, it came and knocked her square in the head and caused her to... Huh? Ow! Hurt. Oh yeah, it caused her head to hurt. The no morning news always gives me a headache. Did you tell me that we see those headlights? Yes. Well, which one of you will be man or woman enough to fess up to hitting this cash or buy in the head with your hate paper this morning? Huh? Now one of you threw your paper and hit her. Not on purpose, of course. Come on, fess up. Who went in the desk to read your paper this morning, huh? <laughs> well, it looks like it's going to take me some time to investigate this, madam. Just forget about it. Come on, Helen. Uh, and you kids, just use better aim next time. Or maybe you had a perfect aim. <laughs> Well, sure, but Santa can afford that. I'm talking about the first 
Christmas problem. I mean, God gave us Jesus. Now, where did you go again with all your fairy tales? Is Santa a fairy tale? Uh, of course not, Virginia. Why, a New York newspaper just recently printed a letter from a girl just about your age saying that Santa is real. Now, it wasn't the sun, so I'm taking them at their word, but I haven't seen the sun print anything about your manger story being real. So. But it is real, Papa. Virginia, you can believe it if you want, but this is just the way that I am. Remember, I've got to have the facts for any story before I'll believe it. Now I must get going. I've got a trolley to catch. Bye, Papa. Have a day at work. Goodbye, Virginia. And goodbye, Virginia's friends. Goodbye, Virginia's dad! Oh my goodness! That's it! What's it? Eddie, I just got the most absolute biggest, terrifical idea! Absolute what? Uh, you feel alright there, Jenny? More than alright. I'm feeling Christmas good! What's Christmas good? That feeling you get when you find the tree shop. That perfect gift to skip somebody for Christmas. Is it for your dad, Virginia? His Christmas gift? Yep, it's the best Christmas good idea I ever had. <laughs> And my papa always says that if it says it in the sun, it must be 
these up. I like it so far. So, could you write the real story of Christmas in your newspaper so that my papa will believe it? Isn't that sweet? Boy, well, it's more than sweet. It's perfect. The real story. That's what all right. It'll be the greatest story you've ever written. The greatest story anyone has ever written. But guys, there's no return address on this letter or even a last name. Henry will find her. After all, he's the chief lead senior special investigator junior reporter and a junior editor for the sign. That's me. Uh, 
I'm a writer. I work for The Sun. I'm a reporter. Well, actually, I'm the chief lead senior special... Never mind. That doesn't matter. What does matter is I'm going to be out of a job really soon if I don't find a front page for the Christmas morning edition. So, what does this Virginia girl that we may or may not happen to know have to do with you and your story? Well, she wrote a letter to the paper and gave us a tip for the perfect future story for Christmas morning. My boss wants me to find her and write it. Why don't you go me an award? An award, huh? Mm -hmm. They ought to give us newsies an award. You reporters just write the news, but we deliver it. Without that, you're nothing. Yeah! yeah! Well, the way I've seen some of you pitching newspapers, you should be in the World Series. How about you win yourselves an award there? How about that? Can you kiddos help me out? I really do need to find the girl who wrote me this letter. What letter? Why, this letter. It's the sun. Hey, that's my letter. You, you wrote this? Am I in trouble? No, no, of course not. So can you do it? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? There's a story about Christmas in this sun. So my papa will read it. You just know what they say. If it says it in the sun, it must be so. I'll try my best, kid. Here's my information for your parents. Now, tell me more about the story you want me to print. It's all about the baby Jesus. Ooh, don't forget to tell them about the donkey. That's my favorite part. I like the camel better than the donkey. Those funny humps on their backs. Yeah, and the gifts they brought the baby, gold, princess, and more. Wait, me? No, not you, more. It's Merlin, not more. Whatever. And a falling star. And the angel with a flaming star. The star didn't fall and the angels didn't know the flaming sword. How do you know? Were you there? Yeah! What? 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 I don't need all that stuff. I just need the facts. The who, what, when, where, and why. That's what every good story needs. The five W's. The five what? But what if I didn't know the five W's? Yeah, that sounds kind of hard. The five W's? Who's going to know that? Hey, Virginia, why don't you take it to Miss Ellie, the librarian? She knows everything. So, now we're getting somewhere. This is Ellie. She's a real know-it-all. Huh? Not a know-it-all. She has news and all. Like an encyclopedia. I think she wrote the encyclopedia after she wrote the dictionary. But I thought Daniel Webster wrote the dictionary. Maybe she was his ghost writer. So there's a ghost? Yep, more or less. Hey, that's my line. What? No, Les, the ghost writer makes you write stories of ghosts. Well, not really, but anyways, we're getting off track here. So, does this Miss Ellie know the Christmas story? She doesn't know it. She was probably there. She was there? Probably. I don't know about that. I haven't heard nothing about Miss Ellie when they told the Christmas story in Sunday school. She wasn't actually there, but she is a genius. Yeah, she's an expert on everything. Well, can I meet her? Virginia! Oh, that's my mom now. I gotta go home. But can you meet us at the library tomorrow? Sure thing. What time? I'm doing my to play at 2 o'clock. You can see mom, me, mom, and papa. And do you play? Alright, sure thing, kid. 2 o'clock is. And I'm sure Miss Ellie can help you! Thank you.
story of the year with someone who has only how, how long? Has he been here exactly? Um, uh, fifteen years, ma'am. Fifteen years. That I never should have trusted a beginner. That's why I get for hiring the chief lead senior special investigative reporter and junior editor for the Sun. That. Who gave him that ridiculous title anyway? Let's 
is all you need, just the text. A savior. 
To save them from what? We will get to that. But right now, we're looking at when. This all happened over 2,000 years ago. So, it's old news then? Well, yes, but it seems that a lot of people still don't know about it. So it's new to them. They have been told it was going to happen. And they were watching for it. But many still do not recognize it when it happened. You see, there were all these prophecies. Purple seas. Is that in the Red Sea? Not purple seas, honey. Prophecies. A prophecy is like telling the news before it happens. Like when my mom says I'm going to fail a test because I didn't study. Yeah, or when my sister says I'll get frostbite on my toes if I don't wear my socks in the snow. Well, something like that. For hundreds of years, the people of Israel have lived in oppression and bondage. They had been crushed by their enemies and had began to despair. Their only hope lie in the promise of a savior. Was that the purple sea? I mean the prophecy? Yes, Stevie. They were promised by God that a redeemer, a rescuer would come and free them from the cruel burden their sin had brought upon them. So the people watched and waited for the coming of the Messiah.
waiting is like really, really hard. Well, it can be, my dear. Stevie, would you read Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14? Does it have big words? Well, I don't think so, but if it does, Virginia would be glad to help you. God himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin shall conceive a child. She shall call his name um, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Very good, Stevie. Your reading is improving. Thanks, Miss Ellie. I've been working really hard. And it most certainly shows, dear. And that, Mr. Wasworth, is the when of Christmas. The prophecies were given over 2,000 years ago. Okay, a son would be born. Got it. What about the where? The where? Right here in the country of Israel, Bethlehem. Oh, as in, a little town of Bethlehem. Yes, I see you've heard of it. Oh, say, there doesn't happen to be a city on there called Fa La 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 on there, I mean. It is a Christmas girl, too, isn't it? Mr. Wadsworth, Bethlehem is a real place. If you were in Israel today, you could visit it for yourself. But anyway, let's get back to my story. Let's see. We covered when and where. I'd say, let's move on to what? The coming of a savior. This is the good part. A savior, that's interesting. Here I thought Christmas was all about baby. Is it? <laughs> yes, now that's a good reporter. Asking the right questions, gathering the facts. The facts. Okay, just the facts. Well, the fact is that every man, woman, and child has a need. And their creator knew exactly how to meet that need. For hope, for love, and for forgiveness. You want to know a fact? Every human being on the face of the earth has a need for God and a need for a savior. Who says? Well, it's right here in the Bible. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. I don't think that I understand. Well, that's all right. Um, better way to explain. Our current day certainly is brighter than the days of the ancient prophets. Just think of all the modern conveniences we have now. Like that roller coaster we saw over in Grant Park. And like hot and cold running water. In the typewriter. Yes, or that underground train in Boston. Now that is revolutionary. Don't save me from any of those modern conveniences. <laughs> well, I love my gas furnace as much as any Chicago. But still, the ease that we have gained from all these luxuries and blessings, it doesn't satisfy us for long. Before we know it, we become aware again for a longing for something. And that longing can, in fact, only be satisfied by one thing, a savior. One who can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Give us peace with God. Peace with God. And that is no fairy tale. I'm listening, but I'm not sure where this is taking us. Well, that's all right. The story isn't finished yet. Virginia, are you ready to begin your play? Yes, ma'am. All right, then. There's a few more things to get in place. And there are some my angels. There they are. Also went up from Galilee with Mary, 
his espoused wife being great with child. And so it was that as they were there, hold on, where's the baby? Mary Dogs played baby Jesus. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and walked to his swaddling clothes, and made him in a manger. There was no one in him there. As the stars twinkled in the heavens, in the tiny village of Bethlehem slept, a very special baby, the Messiah, was born.
really, I mean, he could have come to Chicago or someplace like that. Hey, that would have been pretty great. Well, there wasn't a Chicago back then. But if there was, he might have? No, it had to be someplace fancy like Paris or London, right? Or New York or Los Angeles. Well, it wasn't fancy, but it was special. He had to be born in Bethlehem, in the country of Judea, to fulfill the prophecies given hundreds of years earlier. A man named Micah prophesied, but you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet a ruler will come from you, who will be like the shepherd for my people, Israel. There you go again with those purple seas. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, prophecies. I wish I could have been there that night. I would have liked to meet the baby Jesus. Imagine looking into the face of God, or to actually hold him in your arms. Yes, the nation had been waiting for so long. And so few got to be there when it actually happened. But what a wonderful night it must have been for all those who were present. You see, the Savior came in such a quiet way that only Mary and Joseph knew who he really was, that he was God's son. Do you really think, Mary, knew that, that she was holding the Savior? Yes, she knew. An angel had appeared to her much earlier and told her, that through a miracle, she would be giving birth to the promised one, Jesus. Wow, a miracle. He must have been beautiful. What happened next, Miss Ellie? Is it time for the angel to come visit Mary again? Well, not Mary, but others. What happened next was wonderful. Right here in Luke chapter 2. And there was in the same country Shepherds abiding in their fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Shepherds! Oh, that's me! She said, Shepherds! Up.
Well done. Well done, Virginia. You all have quite an imagination. Bring the costumes back to me, my little ones, and we will tuck them away until next year. Thanks, Virginia. You're a great director. And thank you too, Miss Ellie. That was so fun. Well, it was a lovely play, darling, but we do need to be getting home. My goodness, it's way past supper time. And you children should be getting home too. Come with me. I'll walk with you. Come on, everyone. Let's go. Good night, Mr. Wadsworth. Good night, Good night Ellie. We'll Good night. Well, I'll be right along, dear. I'll see you at home. Thank you. I also think, Miss Ellie, looks like I've got everything I need here. All the dummies. The who, what, when, where, and I'm kind of getting hungry, so I'm just going to... Aren't you missing something? You're right. I forgot the byline. There we go. Now I'll just put it all together and send it to my editor. But you're still missing something very important. Oh, yes! The why. Or, the, the children. Yes. No. You've forgotten the most important W. The why. The why? Oh, yes. The why. Well, I don't know how many inches the paper's going to give me, so I might just have to leave that one out. But without the why, the rest means nothing. You have to include the why. Uh, why? Well, without the why, there is no true Christmas. Well, Miss Ellie, what is the why? Well, it's simple. Love. It's love? Yes, that's right, Henry. God's love. For you. Love. Ellie, I don't know what you are talking about. God's love for me. <laughs> Who could believe such a fantastic story? God's son coming to do all of this for me. Me, living 1,800 years later in Chicago of all places. I mean, come on. It, it just doesn't seem plausible. Why would anyone do that? I would never send my daughter to die for anyone. So why would God send his son to die for me? For one reason. Because there was a debt of sin that had to be paid, and he was the only one who could pay it. So that anyone who believes this truth will have a whole and lasting life. Dead? What are you talking about? And by the way, I think my life is whole as it is. I am satisfied with the way that things are now. I have to agree with my friend here. I think I'm a pretty good person. Certainly not bad enough that someone should feel that they have to give their life to save me. Well, gentlemen, I'm glad that things are going well for you today. But whole? Satisfied? Not so bad? I believe at some point in this troubled world we will all know despair, sorrow, regret, bitterness. And when that day comes, where will you find a love so great that it meets those needs? But I do agree, it is a pretty fantastic story. No, the way I expected it to turn out. Well, perhaps not, Henry, but it is the truth, and that's what you asked for. Thank you, Zoe. You've given me a lot to think about. Good night. Good night.
talked about this for years. Perhaps it's time you stop running. But you know that whatever you decide, I will always love you. And so will God. Good night and Merry Christmas. Good night, sis. And Merry Christmas. What's this I hear about you running? What am it's this whole Christmas thing. God's Son come to earth, the manger, the cross, the why. I don't know why. It is so hard for me to make this leap. I can believe that, that God loves the world as a whole, but it's believing that he did this for me that I can't get to. It sounds kind of like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Yeah, just it's too hard to believe, you know? But that is where you're wrong. There is a big difference between some fairy tale and the kind of love that we are talking about here. How so? You can't live some fairy tale. This love is real. It's sacrificial, unconditional, and satisfied. True love will cover all of your sins. It makes you pure or clean. A fairy tale can't change your life. It doesn't last beyond its own pages. This love is eternal. This is real love. Not some fairy tale. This, this love is a fact. Wow. You have given me a lot to think about. Now, it just comes down to one thing, a choice, your choice, to believe and accept that love or to turn away. Well, I gotta be going now. It's been a really long day. Sir William, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
I saw your play, and I heard the facts myself. I realized that even I need a savior. I didn't even have to read it in the sun. I know that God loves me. Yes, Virginia, I do believe that there is a savior in Christmas. Oh, he's getting back! 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 Oh, he's getting back!